Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and to another episode on my Porsche 924 Safari. As you can see, she's back in the garage and uh, that means she's back from Porsche Centrum Gelderland where she has received a, a roadworthiness certificate and they did a couple of things for me that wasn't quite right on the car. Let me quickly take you through an update of what they found and what they did and then I'll take you through what I'm planning to do uh, in this episode to get her finally ready to go onto the road. So the first thing that they inform me about is that the fuel line at the back here between the tank and the pump was internally broken. I'm not sure what happened there. That was a new fuel line I fitted about two years ago, but maybe because it sat in the fuel for that long, something happened. They replaced that. That's still available from Porsche. So there's a brand new fuel line installed over there. They were unable to do the alignment on the rear axle initially, but once they loosened the bolts, the car seemed to settle. And when they tightened them up again, uh, the alignment was fine. So this guy has now got a full four wheel alignment. The camber on the back is a little bit too positive, but it's minute uh, from stock. So it is, it's what's going to happen when you lift a 924, right? It's, it's going to bring the wheel a little bit in, but that's fine. We can live with that. For the rest, I had some comments about my demister that didn't work properly. That was just be me being an idiot and I didn't connect up the uh, hoses at the bottom of the dash correctly. Once they fixed that, that was fine. And the other issue they had is the fact that my fan for the ventilator only runs at top speed. I have been in here, I've had the whole center console open again. I do not know why this fan doesn't run on speed one and two. The actual controller works fine, the resistors work fine, the voltage is fine, but somehow this fan only fires at top speed, which is fine to be honest, because while you're driving, you open it up, it gets fresh air. So I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. The other thing that happened is that my oil pressure and my voltmeter stopped working. I sort of kind of knew it wasn't the gauges, uh, but I took them out, tested them, they were fine, so I knew I had a cable problem somewhere. And as I started fiddling, I found out that one of the power cables that, f that comes into the plug just sort of snapped off. Uh, I repaired that cable, plugged it back in, and the voltmeter and oil uh, pressure gauge now works again, which is great. Then the last thing is that the hatch kept on popping open. I adjusted it as well as I possibly could with the locks I had, but I think those locks are just past due. I've now replaced them with brand new locks, which was quite expensive, but at least now there's no way you're getting this hatch open and it's sitting really, really nice and tight. So that's the update. So what am I going to be doing in this episode? I want to install the luggage cover, which is somewhere over there in the garage. I'm going to install these new carpets. I want to install these guys on the sills. I need to get these roof racks on and I need to get this guy onto the car as well. The other thing I need to do is the clutch is quite low. Some of you who have been following the series know that when I installed the clutch, I couldn't quite get it adjusted properly. I know now why. It's because the lever that sits in the bell housing needs to be adjusted. So I'll do that in this episode. And then once everything is installed, I have some really nice goodies in the corner here that's going on the roof rack, which is going to look super cool. All right, so sit back, relax. I'm going to get this guy on the quick jacks and then we can start working. So this is the clutch cable that goes into the bulkhead over here and it hooks up to the clutch pedal somewhere over here and it then runs over the brake fluid reservoir down onto that bracket there and you can see there's a lock nut on there which is a 19 millimeter lock nut and uh, I need to loosen that and then I should be able to slide the cable out and then it hooks onto a lever which I'm not going to be able to show you at the moment 
maybe I can. It's right there. In order to get to this 19 millimeter nut, you can see I do not have a lot of place to play here. I have a special tool, and if you have a Porsche 924, you'll need this tool, uh, this guy, 19 millimeter, sawed off so that you can get into tight spaces. I use this a lot. There are many 19 millimeter bolts you cannot get to with a normal wrench, and this shortened wrench is great. And the best part is I also have the back ends of wrenches that I've cut off, like this one, and like this one, a 17, and I also even have a 13. So I have a 19, a 17, and a 13 all cut off on, in the middle so that I can use them in short spaces. This is very, very good to have in your toolbox. So. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, and as you can see, I've now slid it off the bracket. Sorry, I couldn't film that piece, but now we go under the car and see if we can get that lever off. So just before we jump under the car, I just want to show you what it is we're trying to achieve. So this is the clutch cable that I just removed from that bracket. So I just untied these nuts up here. This is the lever we need to adjust. So this lever is screwed onto the bell housing over here. Uh, and we have to get this gap correct. This is the bit I didn't do correctly when I installed the clutch. I assumed that I don't have to adjust this because it was working fine before. But as the clutch wears, this gap actually grows. Uh, and you are supposed to adjust this every now and then to make sure you always stay within this 138 uh, millimeter um, bandwidth. So what I want to do now is go under the car, remove this lever, and then I'll reinstall it to make sure that I have the correct gap between these two points. And then I should have a clutch pedal that feels correctly because at the moment the clutch grabs almost on the floor and it should grab sort of kind of halfway through its travel. All right, so this is the bell housing and right there you can see that clutch lever that we need to uh, adjust. So I'm going to try and loosen that nut and then we're going to see if we can get this arm to move freely on its pivot. All right, I've got the bolt out, it wasn't too tough. And now I'm going to go up to the top again and pull this lever until I get that 14 centimeter gap that I need. All right, now that we have this bolt out of here and we can actually move this arm, the next job for me to do is to create this 14 centimeter gap when I've removed all the play from the arm. So in order for me to do that, because it's very tough to get a tape measure in here, I've actually created this little tool, which is a rope with a loop and a knot and the bottom of this loop and the knot is exactly 14 centimeters apart so if i now hook this over this clutch arm and i pull up on it which means i take out all of the play then this little knot should not get above the bracket it should be right in the bracket then i know i've got exactly 14 centimeters worth of space between these two and then my clutch is adjusted correctly five minutes later Okay, so it took a bit of adjustment, but I think I'm now where I need to be. So this is the um, lever with free play still in it. And if I pull it up, this is where the free play ends. And it's exactly level with the bracket. So that's the spot I need to be, it to be in. I'll see if I can get you guys on a better angle so you can see. All right, so hopefully you can now see it. So it's below the bracket and I pull it and it's sitting right in the middle of that bracket. So this is where we want to be. Right, so that's correctly adjusted. Now I'm going to get under the car again, get the bolt back in, get it tightened up so it doesn't move, and then we can get the cable back on, and then the clutch is correctly adjusted. Doesn't need a lot of torque, 15 Newton meters or 11 pound feet should be enough. 
which she has. So we're done down here. Let's go up top. All right, so the last thing for me to do now is to just reattach this clutch cable to that lever down there, and then the clutch is functioning and adjusting correctly. Um, so I'll quickly do that off camera because it's tough to film, and uh, I think you understand the process by now. Once this is done, we can move on to some other jobs. The following day. All right, so the clutch is installed, tightened up, and the cable is on the lever, so this is all buttoned up. So the next thing I want to do is to install the new mats into the interior. All right, so I've got the little arms under the seat rails installed and I've replaced my silver with yellow passivated bolts because that just looks a little bit better and more professional. So the next thing for me to do is just pull in this guy and um, secure it down. Under the handbrake and onto there. Like that. And the 94 as you can see that has the exact same shape as a 944, so these carpets fit perfectly. Now I'll just do the other side and the backs and then we are done. All right, with the carpets now in the car, I'm gonna move my attention to the roof rack system. So the roof rack is on. It's not perfectly on yet. I'll still have to fiddle with it a little bit. But um, I think it's looking nice. The black and the blue works well together. So um, I'm quite happy. So the next thing for me to do is to just double check that my hatch clears. Um, if not, I have to move this whole rig forward. Um, but let me show you guys what I bought. All right, so what I've bought is the water canister for the 911 Dakar so that I can have water on board my safari if I should ever need it and let's see what's in this box I also have so Porsche brand jerry can very nice. In metal, I have holders for both of these, um, which I'll show you in a second. I've got a spout that goes into my tool chest. I have two of these guys. Yeah. 
these will help me secure it to the roof rack. So I've got two of these. Very nice. Last piece of kit that I bought. And again, guys, this is just for fun. I'm not pretending that I'll ever use this anymore because it's too pretty. But I have extracts with a beautiful Porsche logo on them. All of this stuff, including my spare wheel, will go onto the roof. Okay, so that's all mocked up. It's not final. I need to fiddle with this for hours and hours and hours on end until it's perfectly good on this roof. But uh, I wanted to give you guys an idea of what this looks like. And it's going to be very, very cool. As you can see, my tire, my water, my fuel. And we go around. My max tracks all fit onto this roof rack that I've got. So... Um, I'm happy with the results and I hope you guys are too and um, I promise in the next episode we are finally going to resume the work on the 968. Until next time guys, goodbye.